Let's start with yes. our GDP number, shall we? Um, it looks solid. And everyone's asking the same question, Mick, so I'll ask it of you. Is it sustainable? Yeah, uh, we really do think that it is. You, again, you look at some of the, the technicals, you get down deep in the numbers. This is a sustainable uh, growth uh, cycle that we are in. It's a supply-driven growth cycle that we're in. And uh, one of the things that we draw attention to, or try to draw attention to today, is how, how mild the inflation numbers were and what came out this morning, 1.6%, well below what people expected, but not what we expected here at the White House. We've been telling people for the last year that this is a different type of demand, a different type of growth cycle driven by the supply in the market, which would typically put less pressure on inflation. So we really do feel like we're in that, that Goldilocks moment where we're, we're getting good GDP growth, uh, but we don't have the inflation that traditionally you might have seen with this type of market. Um, maybe it takes pressure off of the Fed to raise rates, as they've indicated they, they want to do. So um, all things seem to be uh, pointing in the right direction right now. And this is a group of economists on Wall Street, Mick, that I speak to every day that just don't believe this story carries on into 2019. I I'm looking at the projections from the median projection of the economists we track here at Bloomberg on the street. And the expectation is that GDP slows to 2.5% in 2019. Where are you on that, Mick, and how big's the spread? Sure, we, we still, our projections are still roughly in that 3% uh, 3% range for the next couple of years. We do think that is, that's uh, that's sustainable. Keep in mind, and I don't know who you're talking to, but a lot of folks are just heavily invested in seeing that number not come in at, at 3%, especially folks who are tied to the previous administration we wanted you and me to believe that 1.9% was the best you could do forever. Uh, keep in mind, Paul Krugman said one time, I think that you could make him complete dictator of the country, and he couldn't get you up but a couple tenths of a percentage point. Um, no, there's a lot of folks who, who, again, missed this time. The 3.5% is higher than a lot of folks expected. That inflation number is lower than a lot of, of folks expected. But again, at the administration, it's right where we thought we would be given the policies we put in place over the first seven quarters. So, Mick, right where we thought we would be on GDP, the economy is booming. We can't argue against that. Tax revenue essentially flat in fiscal 2018. Why? Well, tax revenue is flat. It's up a little bit. We still took in record uh, revenues last year. It's down on the corporate side, which you would expect given the, the lower rates at the beginning of the of the dynamism that would come from a, uh, from a tax cut. But individual tax receipts uh, set all-time records. Keep in mind that the, the budget deficit that we rolled out, at, I think it was uh, 780 uh, a couple weeks ago, was actually $70 billion less than the Congressional Budget Office estimated as recently as, I think, June or July in the summertime. So revenues continue to, to, to sort of meet our expectations. It's the spending side of the ledger right now that's driving a lot of uh, the, that deficit, all of that deficit actually, um, and it's the discretionary part of, of that spending that's contributing greatly to that. One of the reasons you saw the president uh, speak so strongly about reducing discretionary spending at the cabinet meeting last week. So yeah, no, the deficit's a problem, but the revenues really are not what's uh, what's leading us down that, that deficit path right now. It's the spending side of the ledger. Many people might sit here and say, well, that's rich, and this is just a classic example of politicizing the deficit and making it about spending. It's pretty clear that income, tax receipts aren't coming up outside of the uh, consumer income side of the agenda. What do you say back to that? Uh, that's going to take some time for those those tax cuts in the corporate tax cuts to sort of to kick in. When you lower corporate rates from 35 percent to 21 percent, yeah, in the first couple of quarters, receipts are going to be less than you expected. But all of our projections long term are that when you get to year seven, eight, nine, ten, and then outside of what we call the budget window, and in D.C. we budget by 10-year in increments, outside of the budget window, you're talking about corporate receipts that far exceed what we expected before the tax cut. So yeah, we did expect corporate rates, to, corporate collections to come down. That's exactly what happened. But again, all of the money that comes in, and again, to us, a dollar is a dollar, whether we take it from you or your employer, money to us is just a dollar. Um, those receipts are at all-time highs. Is the Republican Party still the party of fiscal responsibility, Mick? Yeah, well, well, we'll find out. It's certainly the president of fiscal responsibility. That's why you saw him unveil the, the nickel plan, which was his idea, by the way. It was not uh, not me pushing that on him. He understands the, the, the import of the deficit. He understands that the import of the discretionary side of the ledger. So when he sat down last week with the cabinet and said, look, everybody's got to cut 5% from last year, he was deadly serious. So uh, as far as the president's concerned, yeah, he's still very fiscally responsible. We encourage Congress, uh, when they get back after the election, to follow that lead. Well, let's talk about the cut to spending, shall we? Each agency, 5%. Does that include uh, defense spending as well, Meg? It does. Actually, I think the number, he actually set the number for defense at $700 billion, which is about a 2.5% reduction for defense. So I think he's treating that slightly separately. But again, everyone will do more with less than they had last year in our budget. Um, also, you might see some agencies, State Department, for example, education, um, actually have reductions that exceed 5%. So no, the president uh, has spending uh, in his mind, and it is a focus of his right now, and you're going to see that trickle down through the budgets from the various cabinet agencies. I just wonder whether that's going to be enough. I'm looking at interest payments 
moment of 500 billion plus. I'm looking at a deficit of 780 billion, and most people expect those numbers to get worse, not better. Yeah, well, and certainly uh, we're very cognizant of what happens with interest rates because we're the largest borrower in the world. So interest rates go up. We're very interest rate sensitive. I think that $500 billion number doesn't kick in for a couple years out. I think we're someplace in the in the low threes this year. But, uh, uh, but you're right. We are getting in that direction. Yes, we are absolutely concerned about it, which is one of the reasons the president's, I think the last three budgets or the last two budgets the president uh, offered us some of the greatest, uh, broadest spending reductions ever. Keep in mind, if Congress had passed our budget two years ago, we'd be well on our way to a balanced budget. We didn't do that. Congress chose not to do that. That's fine. Um, they have a chance now to put this 5% reduction in place uh, beginning with this year's spending plan. So it's slightly confusing to a lot of people that in the same week we talk about fiscal responsibility and cutting spending by 5%. We're also talking about another tax cut. Can you make sense of that for us? Sure. I think the president really wants to do more, even more, for the middle class. Um, the, the tax cuts uh, and reform package that we passed last year was a huge boon to the middle class, especially in terms of things like the child care tax credit. But if the president can figure out a way f in a fiscally responsible manner to, uh, to give another 10 percent uh, reduction to the middle class, um, that's good for the economy. It's good for people. It helps build on what we've seen, which is house home take home pay is up dramatically. I think uh, it's up like 3 percent in the last seven quarters, and that's on a real basis. Um, so uh, the lower taxes in the middle class raise their wages, raise their bonuses, um, and it just helps build the middle class, which, you know, means a lot to the president. But isn't the tacit admission from this administration that we can't afford it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Isn't the tacit admission by this administration that we can't afford another tax cut in America? No, no, no. I, and, um, and you and I think I've talked about this before in terms of bi there being different types of deficits. There's some deficits that come from wealth transfer payments, which don't contribute very much to growth. There's deficits that might come, for example, by gov from government investment and things like infrastructure research that has some return on that investment. And there's, there's the tax, the deficits that come from letting you and me and everybody watching this program keep more of their own money through tax reductions. That's the most efficient allocation of resource. We do think that's the, help, the thing that helps us grow the economy. And again, we've been right. So everybody who says you couldn't do this, uh, now you should be asking them the question, why is it that you were wrong and Trump was right? We got the 3% you didn't say was achievable. It looks like you'll have it for at least the next couple of quarters. What, what, what was wrong with what uh, those folks said coming into this administration uh, that uh, we were able to, 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 to prove right on? Mick, I agree with you. Many economists said we couldn't get to 3. We got to 3. In fact, we had a four handle in the previous quarter. I think man, where many people will disagree with you is that it's come with a big price. It's come with a much, much bigger fiscal deficit. And the spending plans that we've heard this week just won't touch the sides. Um, again, this, the spending plans that we roll out, I think, are fiscally responsible. Um, so, again, keep in mind, who spends the money? Congress spends the money. That's the way the Constitution works. We can send our budgets to the Hill, and we have done that for the last two years, do it again this year. Uh, we'd like Congress to pay closer attention to it. And now that I think everybody knows, um, people don't realize this, but if you watched the Cabinet meeting last week, you saw the President talk about it in public. But as soon as the door closed, ordinarily that would be when the President turns to me and says, Mick, tell us about the budget. Uh, he didn't do that this year. The President talked about this himself for 20 minutes. In fact, I I didn't say a word. This is the president's idea. The president now has spending in his sights, and we are going to uh, bring the full force of the administration behind getting some fiscal responsibility. Keep in mind, how we did so well with the budget back in the 1990s was we didn't really cut spending. We grew the economy in the late 1990s and had fiscal restraint. Revenues grew faster than expenses. That's what we're trying to get back to. So, Mick, it just seems to me that we're going back to the old politics, that what's going to happen after the midterms is the classic argument, the classic blame game between the Democrats and the Republicans, just not to deal with what's in front of them right now, which is a debt problem. Um, again, the, the political uh, atmosphere here is pretty hyperpartisan. There's, there's no question about that. I don't think I'm making news when I say that. I would be curious to see what gets done in the lame duck. All I can say to your answers on spending, though, is I think the president has laid down the marker. The president said, "Look, I want I want a five percent across the board reduction. I want defense even to do less or do more with less than they had last year." I don't know how the, any president of the United States could could spend a could send a stronger fiscally conservative message.